Nativity, which you're going to see pretty much from every single church right now. Welcome to the brave souls that came out um, for this Sunday. I'm Reverend Gail Zucker. I'm saying that for live streaming because you guys all know me. Um, I just want to address what we know is happening in our area, but also elsewhere with the coronavirus, and that is that we are being challenged and given the opportunity to take care of each other in different ways. Part of that is being responsible about our hand washing and our distancing, like, you know, we're not doing passing the peace in traditional ways today, but I encourage you to use the sign language for I love you, or to give each other the peace sign from a distance, uh, but also to pay attention to your neighbors, because vulnerable people are even more vulnerable right now, or, or more isolated, potentially, um, at greater risk of going unnoticed and being cut off, and this is precisely when we need each other more than ever, but let us do it in safe ways. If you can't go visit somebody, pick up the phone and call them. Write some letters to people that need to hear from you. And part of our cooperation about taking care of each other is also making responsible decisions about how and where we will gather. And so right now, today, we've decided that we would gather those who felt that they were okay with the risk of that. We will be making decisions with church leaders and other churches in the valley going forward about whether we're going to have live gatherings the next few weeks or whether we will be doing more of this kind of thing, like the live streaming where Alan and I show up and Alan plays music and uh, we do videos for you. We'll, we'll keep you posted. But if we're not meeting indoors, it's quite likely that we're going to be planning outdoor activities, like going on walks together or something else, right? And our, our life together as a community doesn't end here. It becomes more exciting, more interesting, and more creative. So let us love each other in the best and most responsible ways that we can. To that effect, we're going to try to shorten today's service. Um, we'll, we may just drop out some pieces that we have in the bulletin for the people that are here. If you're, if you're watching live streaming, you have no idea what we have planned, so you won't even miss the pieces. But the rest of us will. Um, and let's just review the few things that we are asking. There's no coffee hour after church. We're asking people to place their donations in baskets as they come in. We're not going to be passing plates. We are very likely to change our communion protocols entirely or simply not do communion for a month. Again, hand washing, use your Purell, there's Purell in every single pew. Um, we're just going to minimize some of the things that might put us at greatest risk. There are links for online giving in our emails and online, so we encourage you to continue to um, do your regular giving because actually right now a lot of employers are shutting down. We have seasonal employees that are going to be hard pressed economically right now. So we are expecting more use of food pantries and social services and agencies in the valley for the next several weeks, um, which means that churches are going to be asked to be helpful. And so what you do now in terms of your giving means that we have a robust response when we're needed to bolster families in this valley who are being really challenged by what's happening here in other ways. So that's the, the responsible and serious welcome to our community. Thank you for being here, whether you are watching live or whether you're actually here in our pews. And now I would invite us to begin. Are there any other announcements that this community needs to hear this morning? Um, Jeanette? I learned yesterday that across the country, 1,500 left rides have been canceled. The Red Cross sponsors these, but they have to have host facilities where they can be held, and it's the hosts that are canceling. It's not the Red Cross. They are taking extra steps um, in light of everything that's happening. We have several blood drives that are scheduled in the Valley over the next several weeks. Um, the first is next 
So I'm just going to repeat for anybody that didn't hear that, that blood drives around the country have been canceled. It's largely the hosting organizations as opposed to those that actually organize the blood drives. So the Red Cross is running blood drives, but many of the places they would normally hold them cannot host the blood drives. But we do have four happening in the valley. And the need for blood is actually really critical right now. Um, the Boston hospitals are actually maxed out in terms of people that are receiving care. And so referring hospitals are sending people to Maine Med as opposed to sending them down to Boston. So, you know, our medical system is already being stressed. And blood, blood saves lives, right? Um, and we can't plan when and how it's going to be needed. But if you're healthy enough to be able to donate blood, we're going to post the four dates that we know are coming up to next weekend and the following weeks right here in the valley. And we strongly urge you to consider donating at one of those drives to keep people safe. Other announcements for the valley. I'm also just going to remind you, watch Facebook and watch our website and check your email for updates on how we're going to be doing things. We're going to be adapting as we go. And it could be that I'll announce a plan one day and then we're going to have to adapt it the next day. So we're going to be really fluid and we're going to do our best to have fun with this. Let's start with Psalm 88. That's my shepherd who supply my food. Oh, yes. For anybody that sees a new face up here, this is Billy Carlton, and he's one of the blessings of the season. He is a choir director, and we met him this week, the choir met him this week, and we were so happy to have him, and we're going to have choir music, and we're going to do that some way or another, even if we're doing it practicing at home. We're going to figure that out, too, because we're excited to have music back in our lives yet another way. So, go ahead and help us with our song. So everyone knows our intro is going to be the last two measures of the bottom of the age for my shepherd is my age. <laughs>
of worship. These are my people. I find them on the streets in shadow. A dance of strangers I claim.
and what they are called to do. And so we ask for the wisdom to lead, the wisdom to listen to advisors, and to learn as we go. Please pray. <laughs> oh, holy God, you are the God of healing. And you are the God of love that will not be turned away. And today, in this time, we sorely need your presence right here in our valley, which has shown both its fear and its great courage and compassion already. And more of these responses are embedded in us and likely to come out of us. So we ask that the best of us will be called out of us and that we will rise up and love each other in the best and most sustainable ways because you have loved us through death itself and back into life. May we have the courage to love each other through the shadows and back into the light. Hear our silence. as we lift up your words, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And I would invite, we have the three people that are sharing readings with us this morning, and we'll start with Jean and Psalm 23. And if Meg and Bob would also come up and prepare for you as well.
can hardly deny it now. Know that our lives are in one another's hands. Surely that has come clear. Do not reach out your hand. Reach out your heart. Reach out your words. Reach out all the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly where we cannot touch. Promise this world your love. For better or for worse, in sickness and in health, so long as we all shall live. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today especially, uh, the image of the I am from John, that I am the Good Shepherd, and the Good Shepherd lays down his life for those that he loves, becomes more real than ever. And I consider thinking about Christ as the Shepherd walking the way with us as one who offers us a compass. And in these times, we surely need a compass. We need to know how to love each other because on Thursday it became impossible to get toilet paper in the valley, right? So if you didn't already have toilet paper in your house, you rushed to the store, or even if you did, you rushed anyway and got some. And then by the time other people found out that that was the thing that everybody was worried about, it was all gone. Now happily some of the stores have restocked and you can now get toilet paper. But I happened to be able to, I found four rolls at a local convenience store, and I started giving them out to people whose houses I was visiting as a house gift. <laughs> so right now, toilet paper is more valuable than gold, or a bottle of wine. So if you go to somebody's house, consider bringing them a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> Maybe they'll give you a roll of paper towels in return, or something like that, or a bottle of Purell. And though this is funny, it also sort of shows the, the fear factor in all this, right? That in the, in the panic and in the worry, people are, are scooping up everything that they think they need to bunker down, and then there's nothing for other people, right? And so perhaps, you know, breaking up your giant pack of toilet paper and sharing with your neighbor is the one way that you can show your love. Um, but showing our love to those that are vulnerable or didn't get there as early to the store as we did might be a good thing to be considering right around now. Um, our church, like all churches, is going to be thinking about what does it mean to be church when it's not about having an hour-long service in the sanctuary on Sunday, but it means that maybe we gather outside and do things outside together, or it looks like picking up the phone and calling people and if somebody can't get out to get groceries, you go and get them the groceries they need, or you make sure that they have some sense of the contact, or that we're taking care of each other one life at a time in the safest and most loving ways possible, and not letting people slip through the cracks, um, but holding each other up more than ever, because isolation is a, a difficult thing, especially in a time of fear. But we can also have the courage to love each other and do what is right by making sure that there's enough for all of us. And if you think that that's silly in times like these, think again about your compass. Christ walked out into the world and told those who followed him to take only what they needed and leave everything else behind and to trust that what they needed would be present for them that it would be offered to them in the households that hosted them in the communities where they went and sat down and ate with the least loved. And that when they were asked in turn to take care of others, that what was in their hands when they asked for its blessing and shared it in big crowds would be sufficient to feed and fulfill and take care of the bodies that those of those that they were responsible for. God's love is abundant. But we are God's love. And if God's love is going to flow in this world, we are the ones that are going to help it be visible and tangible and real to others. 
And that will look like filling up the offering basket or doing online giving so that we can help others that are hard-pressed financially. And it's going to look like deciding to stay home if you're sick or uh, being patient if we change the way that we gather anyway. And it's going to look like wanting to sing together because we need some hope in the middle of all of the pressure. If we need a compass, the compass has been with us always. And that compass will guide us through these times like it will guide us through any other times. And what we want to do is have been a loving community through all of this and come out the other side and be able to look at our neighbors and say, you love me in surprising ways. And I was able to love you in surprising ways. And you didn't take the last roll of toilet paper. You shared it with me. Or you told me some other creative way to take care of my hiney. Okay. Let us be creative and adaptive and flexible together. And let us take care of the real needs of our bodies and our community. And follow the shepherd where the shepherd has walked. Because everywhere you think you are going, if you are afraid of it, one of the most amazing things about the God that we love is that God walked there first. There's no place you can go that God hasn't already been. Walking towards death, walking into the face of risk and challenge, and being with those who are messy and maybe contagious and vulnerable, and loving people in ways that are meaningful. And staring down death and fear, and believing that there is life beyond that, and that love is present always through everything. And we are called to be our best selves for each other. Follow the shepherd. Listen to the words of Psalm 23. Hear Rumi ask you to be a ladder, a lifeboat, a shepherd. And think about the, pan the pandemic meditation that Lynn Unger also shared with us. And promise this world your love in the ways that you can reach out and touch it, if not with your hands, then with your heart and your words and your voice and your choices. Christ is the great I am. And we too are called to be an I am for others. Thanks be to God. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to sing that we are walking in the light of God and then we are going to go straight to our of benediction and wrap up the service tightly this morning. So for anybody that doesn't know, we are walking in the light of God is see that? Okay, you you say it. Um so for this song we're just gonna see it straight through. Uh if you know it's there, we're not gonna do any of the repeats, first or second endings, we're just gonna read it as in the read it below. Just seeing through it that way. Uh, we can do twice a for sure. Uh, three, one, two, one, two, three, we can start with the...
talking. <laughs> um, we're going to do the benediction and we're going to close out the, the service this morning. <laughs> Go with God as the one who heals and restores. Go in peace.